Hey everyone, Chris Gildart here. I thought long and hard how to bring this series to the channel. Monster Rancher was the first game I ever played from either Koei or Tecmo. I played Monster Rancher 2 all the time. I even watched the anime and went as far as to play the card battle game on PlayStation and Game Boy. As a kid, the top three monster collecting shows were Digimon, Pokemon, and Monster Rancher. Everything else was Scrubs. Except Metabots. Metabots was kind of cool, too. But today we're not reviewing Monster Rancher, we're not let's playing it, and there's no challenge. In today's episode of Disgust It, I'm taking you along with me on a journey. Now to decide which Monster Rancher game to play. I don't own one or four. I don't have a DS capture device, and the Game Boy Advance games wouldn't be as much fun to go through. I've played the hell out of two, and three for some reason just doesn't do it for me, you know? So you know what? Let's go with Evo. The fifth mainline entry in the series. Monster Rancher Evo was something I just never had the opportunity to play. It, the very first game, and DS were the three North American releases I just never got my hands on. So today I wanted to tell you a story. And that story is my adventures in Monster Rancher Evo for the PS2. Alright, so I start off the game as a circus performer. I apparently train monsters to perform in the routines and try to make a bit of cash off of it. When one day, the mochi that I've been working with makes a bunch of mistakes and decides to run away from the circus to die so its friends don't have to see it during its last moments on Earth. Good to know we're starting off on a light note. While sitting there fucking mourning, this chick Neuda shows up and is like, Sup y'all, I can summon monsters with magic! And makes this heartless out of a disc that we had laying around. And now it's time to give him a name, apparently. I always suck at this. Emple? Nah. My? No, that doesn't work either. Naib? Dekruf? Ekmot? Sediv? Now let's just go with Little Duder. That's nice. During this intro, we get introduced to all the other members of the circus. There's Albert, or Albert, I don't know, there's no voice acting in this. He's a discount joker who is the leader of the troop. Then there's the diva, Marlene. I honestly don't know what she does here. Finally, there's Goffrey, or Joffrey. Again, don't know. He's a big lug that looks like he's better suited in something like Soul Calibur than Monster Rancher. <gasps> Unless he is a monster. So it's decided that Neyuta will join our group and help create monsters for us to enslave and force into performing for the general public's amusement. You know, very animal-friendly stuff. My character doesn't really feel very comfortable with his abilities in training monsters, as he thinks the other monster ran away because of me for some reason. But Neyuta says that I should play this instrument with my soul, and the anima that comes from it will help train the monsters. This apparently works on the first try, because of course it does. I'm amazing. After this, Albert introduces me to what's all gonna go down with the daily routines. I need to plan the monster's training, feeding, and recreation. I ignore this and try to go exploring. Oh, hey, Goffrey, why you gotta be blocking my way? Oh, apparently Marlene wants to talk with me? Fine, I'll go see what she wants. Get your own goddamn cake! Oh, fine. I'll only get your cake because you're paying me, and I wanna go exploring anyways. So I go into town and take Neuta with me because she can't be bothered to be alone. And, uh, hmm, huh. uh, where, wait, where do I go? I, I'm seriously lost. How hard is it to find a cake in this village? Oh, of course, it's, it, it's literally the last house I try. Alright, let's get this cake for Marlene so we can finish up and get on with the actual game. <laughs> Alright, well, fine. Let's just go see what else we can do with this game. So we can train here and see what's to come with the performances in the future. And it's a shitty rhythm game. Great. So I did the shitty rhythm game a couple of times just to get a good feel for what's to come. And uh, uh what do I do now? L like seriously, what do I do? I've talked to everyone. What do I? Oh, I actually need to select to move to the next week. In older titles, you would just pick which type of training you wanted to do with your monsters, and the weeks would go by automatically. So, this is a bit weird at first, but I, I guess I'll get used to it. Alright, week two. If Marlene needed a cake last time, what will I need to do this time? Huh? Oh, you don't want anything else, Marlene. Goffrey? You're good too? Neyud is good as well. Alright, fine. Let's run into the village and see if anyone there has side quests for me. No? M maybe there was something I missed? Let's go back to the circus and check on the monster. He's all good too? Yeah, apparently you just need to skip a couple of weeks before anything interesting happens. After a couple of weeks, Albert mentions that he thinks Little Duder is ready for an actual performance. Which I'm like, 
Okay. I mean, the little guy has only existed for like four weeks. He'll be fine. Everything will be fine. My last monster only ran away because he would rather die than be with me. So this is gonna be fantastic! So we start the performance and I do my little ditty with Nayuta doing her jig. Apparently if I do well at the shitty rhythm game, my monster will perform better. Alright, so let's see. Oh, 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 good! It wasn't just the tutorials. The actual gameplay parts aren't on beat or anything. They just happen. I mean, it's not hard so far. And we complete our performance. Oh, is that cash monies? Yeah, if we do well enough, people will actually just throw money at us. Maybe I should join the circus instead of this whole YouTube thing. Do you see this? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Seriously, we performed so well that the crowd was lulled to sleep. Apparently, Albert thinks we did well, at least. After the performance, the mayor of the village comes to visit, and he says he wants me to take part in the village's tournament called the Devil Hunter Championship. I excuse me? Devil Hunter? What do you mean, Devil Hunter? Tis nothing. Yeah, that's what they all say, bub. This doesn't stop the mayor or Neyuda from convincing me to give it a try. Well, we're gonna be competing in a tournament. We should have some powerful monsters. That being said, I can only have one monster at a time right now, and I don't really want to get rid of Little Duder just yet. But apparently I can scan discs anyways to add new monsters to my book. This was one of the funnest things to do. Pop in a CD or DVD and see what kind of monster was held within it. So I put Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore in, and oh, damn. You're right, Nayuda. This is a cool monster. Hmm. Let's give Dynasty Warriors 6 on PS2 a try and see what this gives us. This... this seems fitting. Now, what's something weird I can try? Hmm... Oh, I know! Coldstone Creamery Scoop Up on the Wii! Oh wow, that gave me a purebred hair. He was one of the main characters in the anime, and I have a lot of nostalgia for him. Uh... apparently Neyuta does too. Is there something you want to tell me? The next few weeks are pretty boring, and this is where I'm reminded of how much waiting you have to endure in Monster Rancher. I just checked on my monster here and there, asked everybody if they needed help, and did the odd show. Really, nothing exciting. Albert kept mentioning that different exercises would train my monster better, and would involve various members of the circus, and I would need to figure out what to do each week for the sake of my monsters. But I wasn't able to change the training my monster was doing at the time. I honestly thought maybe I glitched the game. But then I figured out I had to actually talk to the mayor and trigger the tournament. Oh well, little duder game some stat ups from the shows we put on anyways. So we head out for the tournament location and find two other breeders. I'm gonna take a wild guess that these are my rivals and the bad guys we need to beat. And with poses like that, I'm gonna take that as a yes. So Dottie and Petty are apparently the only other people who take part in the tournament. And we whoop their asses thanks to tutorial power. After the battle, the mayor rejoices that a breeder will now actually kill the devil that's been lurking in the woods. Listen, dude, I've only been doing this for a couple of months now, so don't put all that weight on my shoulders. When we get back, Neyuta mentions that we should get a team together to bring into the woods so we're not defenseless. You know, if you're going into a suicide mission, you need some sort of suicide squad. Or so I've heard, anyways. So she says I should summon some more monsters. Now, as a collector, I don't want to just grab the monsters that we've already created from the book. I want to try some new discs and see if we can get some different monsters out of it. So let's see, why don't we try a warrior's clone like Drakengard? This has got to get me some good monster, right? Well, apparently it's just too good of a monster because Neyuta can't summon anything from it. I remember this happening in the older games too. That way you wouldn't accidentally summon the best monster in the game right away. So why don't we try another game? This time, let's throw in Dynasty Warriors 4. Again, this is a good game, so we gotta get something good. And same thing happens. Okay, don't do this to me, game. I finally tried Digimon World on PS1 and get this flame slime. Of course, I had to name it Hot Stuff with a PH. I then tried Dynasty Warriors 3 because I want a monster on my team to come from a Warriors title. This gives me an armored hair, and it looks pretty fucking rad if I do say so myself. And of course, we gotta name this one after the strongest character in the game. There we go. And now we're off to the forest to kill us a devil! I actually really like this part of the game, and it's a bit different from the other exploration minigames of the series. It really enforces the JRPG style of this game. You walk around a map finding random monsters roaming about, and treasure chests left by who knows, filled with what's its that you can use whenever. In all honesty, this kind of reminds me of Dark Cloud, which is a good thing in my books. 
We also get to experience the full combat system of the game. Similar to the combat of previous games, the distance of your monsters to the enemy decides which moves you can use, but this time, it kind of goes for a pseudo turn-based mechanic. You can move back and forth freely, but the moment you hit X on your monster, that's when the combat begins. You choose your move, and if another monster of yours is linked, or in the same position, they'll be able to attack at the same time, creating a sort of combo set. It's difficult to truly grasp at first, but it's a whole lot of fun. As you're traveling the dungeon, you'll also find things that your monsters can interact with. The monsters you take into the dungeon can also walk around with you, and some you can even ride. Yes, you can ride the slime. This, this is amazing. When we get to the end of the dungeon, we find a little kid who Neyuda thinks is kidnapped by the devil, and rather than finishing the mission we started, said we should go back to the village and ask the mayor if people have been going missing. You know, instead of potentially stopping the thing that's been doing the bad stuff. Okay game, you're the one driving the story, not me. So Neyuda and I go talk to the mayor and find out he doesn't know anything about the monster kidnapping children. So before we go back to the woods, we must train. This is a monster that's stealing townspeople and devastating the way of life. So we put on another circus. But we did better this time now that we have all these monsters to help out, and everybody gets a good stat boost. Back in the forest, I find out that not only are the monsters back in the same place as they were before, but so are the treasure chests. We're also really kicking ass through this dungeon. I'm honestly just running into the wild monsters just to get some AP, gold, and items. It also took me a while to recognize it, but do you... Do do you hear that? So we find ourselves next in this spoopy forest, where the trees have scary faces and it's a maze. Multiple exits, but only one is right. The others just loop forever. Great, I love these Scooby-Doo inspired things in video games. Lucky for me, I find my way out and continue on my adventure. We finally run into the boy we're trying to save and he's like, leave me alone. And we're like, but we're here to save you! To which he just runs away and doesn't explain himself. Suspicious, indeed. When we actually corner him, he finally explains. His name is Tico, and he's actually the devil that's been terrorizing the village. Seriously? Okay. He's then like, I'm gonna fight you so I can prove how devilish I can be. And I'm like, we got this. I've got three monsters that I've trained in the last couple of in-game years. How tough can you be? We don't got this, we don't got this, we don't got this! Wait, Lou Boob, you survived! Well, of course, you're Lou Boob. You can take him on, buddy. Just hold on to that 19 health. You've gotta hit him sooner or later, right? A and you're dead. Well, that was effective. Glad we could all come together for this. Well, after that utter failure, it's time to train. It's time for battle after battle. Time for circus after circus. No rest! Sleep is for the weak! We will train! We will develop a specific set of skills! And we will win in a fight and not actually kill you because it's a game for children, but if it wasn't, I would kill you. It is time. After weeks of training, it is time to take on the one that wronged me. The one that hurt my pride. Today is the day he reaps what he sows. Oh, okay, that, that was a lot easier than I thought it'd be. So it turns out this little dude was actually raised by monsters and thinks people would see him as a monster if he tried to interact with the villagers. So instead, he acts as a monster. Dude, that's just feeding the stereotype, man. If you want to make a change, you gotta make it, dude. And literally, that's essentially what we do. We bring him back to the village and he apologizes. Everyone accepts it and we have a very nice little happy ending to it all. After the apology, Tico decides to join the circus crew. From here, everyone decides to move on to a new village. We're off to Kulno. What adventures will we have? Well, I don't know, but I'm excited to see. But that's where we have to leave it. It was very difficult for me to narrow down what I wanted to do with Monster Rancher, but I'm glad I went this way. A review would have taken me forever, and now I've finally experienced Monster Rancher Evo. Did you enjoy this video? Let me know in the comments below whether you'd like to see a sequel, or maybe a similar video in another game. This marks the final scripted video of this year's Muso May. So I hope you've enjoyed the videos I've posted this month, and the ones still to come. Don't forget we've got a new schedule starting next week with lots of Koei goodies to start off with. So don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for all the videos to come, 
Special thanks goes out to the guild who support this channel via Patreon. If you'd like to join their names at the end of every single video, check out the links on screen or in the description. Thanks again for watching everybody, and I will see you all down in the comments.